Hey guys, welcome to Black Belt Breakdown. This breakdown features Ross Nichols, an ADCC veteran, an ADCC trials winner, Pantheon champion, Grapple Fest champion, and a winner on Polaris. In this breakdown, Ross goes over his match against Lloyd Cooper from Pantheon 2 and details some of the strategies that he had approaching the match, some things that happened where he had to change tactics. In this breakdown, Ross also goes over his mindset towards what he's going for and at the end of the breakdown talks about what he thinks about competing and goal setting and achievement. This for me was a very, very eye-opening breakdown and Ross is one of the people that when I had the idea for the channel was one of the first people I thought of for getting on. I want to thank him for coming on and making that a reality. Guys, I really hope you enjoy this breakdown. You should find that I've got rid of all of the little technical difficulties that we had. And if you do enjoy the breakdown, please make sure you like, comment and subscribe and share. Thanks. We are now good to go. Right then. Um... So should we pause it quick? Yep. Right, so I don't know if we need to do an introduction to the match or anything. Will you do that? Or? Yeah, yeah. So um, this was from Pantheon 2. Pantheon 2 and Lloyd 2. Really, really sort of definitely in the UK famous um, leg lockers. So this was a match you can see from behind how many people sort of really... Um, turn to watch this match. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of interest with it. There's uh, Jed in my corner, one of my students, he's doing very well. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's have a look at the match. Lloyd pulls guard early, so you'll see a little bit of my passing and how I prevent Lloyd's leg entry attempts. Um, so, yeah. So, a key thing to note first is head positioning. I'm always going head to head in that sit up position. I never want my head above his for him to look. Right, so if we pause there. Um so Lloyd I think was a bit uncomfortable in the initial uh, exchange that the head positioning caught him off guard. Um which then allowed for this leg entry. So you see my head is under his nose. You see the problem Lloyd has here with his body shape, he's frozen at a perfect perfect time actually. Lloyd's hips are ahead of his shoulder line, so he's going to find it really hard um, to control his legs here, stop you from getting on them. Uh, so I've won inside leg position, I'm controlling that knee, and now I'm going to back step with my uh, right leg as I'm coming forward. My right leg will come underneath his knee to enter forward, forward on one. Okay, so you've got... Um... You have the, the control of the leg here. Mm -hmm. Your um, head is on a lower level. So you're keeping inside head. And then you've got the inside leg position here. Yeah. And uh, I think this came off of Lloyd sitting up, um, trying to force the sit up position. So he had like a split second there where. He doesn't have control over his legs. If Lloyd's hips were back and his head was forward, this entry wouldn't be possible. Okay. So if I kind of got underneath his head, I could get it. So because his head or his shoulders are further yeah. away than his hips. Yeah, moving your hips in that uh, in that shape is really difficult. Okay. There's the leg entry. Yeah. So Lloyd's trying to elevate his hips to work and escape. I've got control of both um, both legs at the moment, which is stopping Lloyd turning um, to his left for like your, your standard running man escapes out of this position. Is there any particular that you're yeah. looking for there? Um. I want to try and pass his secondary leg to the other side of me, ideally. So then that will still stop him turning. 
to the left to hide his heel, uh, the escapes, and I'll be able to work heel exposure. At the moment, with his feet crossed, uh, he's pulling his primary leg to him, he's scrambling out. Now I'm really, I'm struggling, I'm going to be struggling to finish this because I lost that secondary. Okay, so, now we're back up to, uh, to passing. Um, there was an entry that Lloyd was trying to threaten throughout the whole match where he was able to stuff it quite nicely. Um, I think just before this match, he'd done a bit of training with Lachlan and Lachlan came over. Mm -hmm. And there's a 50-50 a heel hook entry that he's trying to work on on me, and I'll show you how I stop it in, I think, the next exchange. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, again, you've got head nice and low. Yeah, so, and you see my hands here? Yeah. So, my hands are, are very low, stopping from get, getting onto my legs. My head is currently above his. So, as I'm entering, I place my head on him. I have to have my hands low to threaten underhooks as he shoots in, uh, for, for my legs. So, if he tried diving in to a leg now, my hands would go under his armpits and I would get to jump on some passes there. Okay, so um, kind of if if he was to jump in, maybe your right arm would go... Catch an underhook, yeah. Like, so that you could knee slide that way or back step that way, I'm guessing? Yeah, or float pass, yeah, any, anything there. So if my head is ever above my opponents, I keep my hands low to catch underhook. So he's always got something, he, he's never got a clear line of sight at my leg. So head comes in, now he's got to get around my head and my arms, which allows me to step in and be an aggressive with the head. So now I'm going to try passing around the other side. Lloyd extends his hips and I can't quite get tight enough to pass there. He sits up again. So yeah, see that if we pause here, there. So I think in a moment he will underhook my left leg, so that right hand will switch to cup in the heel to go in underneath that leg. A uh, bicep on the front of his, on the front of your um, sort of ankle. Yeah, yeah. So he'll switch that and he'll bury his forearm. Okay. What he's trying to do there is to invert to his right. Um, and look to bring his right leg out and hook my thigh. He will then throw this left leg between my legs, trying to catch my far leg for a 50-50 entry. Okay. And this is where my right hand is preventing that inversion. So whenever you're stepping in deep like this to prevent those attacks and those inversions out to that right side, you stuck his left heel to his butt. So this is what kills Lloyd's inversions on my left leg in combination with the depth of the step on my left leg. Okay, so your right hand is pushing his foot down here. Yeah, and that kills Lloyd's inversions off to his right side. And your foot is aiming towards his armpit. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So... Yeah, if we play on a little bit, you'll see Lloyd underhook and then look to try and throw that left leg over, but I'm shutting it down so he can't do that. Okay. So, so there it is. Switch. So he tries breaking that grip. There's the inversion attempt. Mm -hmm. But I fall back for a, for a leg lock there. But that's what Lloyd was fishing for in those positions. Okay. So the K-guard entry. Yes. Oh yeah, so this is a little, just a little attack sequence. Uh, it didn't really get very deep, so I started off with a leg attack. I'm still, I'm currently trying to pull this leg um, in past my hip. This forces Lloyd to sit up, gives me his neck, so I hold on to his neck for a bit. He's on the wrong side to finish the guillotine. 
but because he's posted in trying to get to that side, I was able to get an attempt on the arm, which wasn't all that deep. So now I'm playing my butterfly uh, half guard. So I always play a very shallow grapevine with my right leg. That's so I can extract that leg quick if I need to. Um, so sometimes this this leg. Yeah, yeah. I never punch my half guard leg through. I always just have the foot over the calf. I want I want to control that back leg, but at the same time keep that right knee as close to my chest as possible. Oh my god. Okay, so so this knee. This, yeah. Sorry, this knee of yours. Yeah. You want so, it close to your chest. Yeah. So if I have to reach with my right hook, what will hap- uh, What will happen is my head will move down to my knee, mm-hmm. and this limits space for Lloyd to attack my um, my right hip right. and shut me down for passes. Of course, of course. That yeah, that makes lots of sense. So I use my left butterfly hook to try and square him up to get that leg. So Lloyd's in HQ now. Mm-hmm. I should go for one of my entries. He uh, dies for a submission to prevent that. You know, su- submission only. There's no points here, so yeah. That's one thing that, um, like a lot of passers, don't necessarily do so much is go for the pass by using submissions or submission threats. They're either going sort of um, around or or under, but but rarely, you know, like the pressure passes or anything. Um, but rarely use submissions to to get through. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um... So yeah, again, Lloyd's looking for the same to see. He's tried feeding his hand through mm-hmm. so the depth of my left leg there, and um, he can't invert to sitting on that uh, that heel now. So um, again, you've got you've got Lloyd's left leg in HQ. This is there. You've again stepped into this position. Here, deep behind the knee. Yeah. And where's your pressure going right now? I'm trying to kind of float over the top of him a little bit, yes. I'm gonna. I'm compressing the leg, and I do this sometimes to try and get them a kick away from me. So one of my favorite passes is a smash pass. So if Lloyd, my plan here was to get Lloyd extending with his left leg, and then as he did that, I'd sprawl through my right hip to my left. So in that yeah. direction, yeah. getting his knees together and probably hitting like a um, double underhook, uh, well, a uh, body lock position on it. Okay, so um, the one that like Bushesha is talking about a lot at the moment, the folding pass or... Yeah. yeah, yeah, similar to that. Yeah. So I sit on this hook to try and get a reaction. So nobody... So there's the kick away. Mm-hmm. Lloyd was wise to it and kept his knee wide. So he didn't like overcommit on that kick. Lloyd again is so he's starting to feel the pressure a little bit. He's trying to frame to generate a bit of space now. My half guard there, I'm taking a shin staple. Trying to control his hips. So I take a, a leg list here, trying to force uh, that those, his legs open here. Mm-hmm. I'm keeping my head low all the time. So Lloyd's looking to get under me all the time to get on a leg. So when I'm passing half here, it's really important. Again, my hands and my head position are both in the way for his shots onto my leg. So a similar principle to me, in a similar case to me standing, for him to go after my leg here, he has to get round my head and my arms. Okay, and with the head position, in are you looking for like the forehead under the jaw, or yeah, just under the chin, ideally? Okay, and and I'm guessing this uh, yeah. this 
grip here that Lloyd's got is causing issues. Yeah, so don't like that at all. So I'm going to clear that. It stops me from moving forward, really, effectively. Because if I move forward, leaving that left hand behind, if Lloyd straight armed it, it would drop the left side of my body and open my right. Mm -hmm. So making it easier for me to sweep my weight would be off. Okay. So clear that. In Lloyd's wrist, head position again, tripod trying to get better better pressure through his legs to force them open. So we're back into HQ again. Lloyd looks for the inversion. Loses control on my leg, which just allows me a hot water out of that entry. Yes, yeah. Toe in hot water and knee straight up to my chin. Yeah. <laughs> so again, there's um, the same sort of start position or, or the starting of the pass, the start of the passing. So yeah. you've again got rips over the wrist there. Is that a two-on-one grip? From Lloyd the... is controlling a two-on-one on, on my uh, left arm, so I'm stripping that two-on-one. Okay. And so I'm just coming in, uh, straight arm in with my right arm, and that will clear that grip. You see Lloyd's body position here is... Um, mm -hmm. Is way better to what we what we saw earlier, where I kind of caught him out early on in the fight. Uh, his hips are behind his shoulders now, so now he's he's able to have a fight with me with the head position. Um, he's keeping his legs crossed to try and prevent that inside leg position coming in here. And you see how his right foot is kind of tucked to his butt. That makes it a, a lot harder. Uh, so me trying to step in here, yeah. See that right heel tucked to his butt. Yeah, that's limiting space for me to step for inside. Mm -hmm. So what I've got to do first to force that space and force his legs to open is win that head battle and get him moving backwards. So we play on. So that see on the lean back. That's where he's able to step in. When he's leaning forward like that, we see it close to his butt. See, so he's got a foot there. And then... Yeah, so, that's pretty, so I can't get inside leg position there with that body shape. Mm -hmm. And the more, but when I see him tilt back, you'll see his legs open. And you've got to do it as a counterweight. Yeah. So. There. So there, there, yeah. So there's the, he opens them for me. Yeah, so that there's space now. You can see your foot is going inside of there. Yeah, so I'm likely to step deep to my left side again, working headquarters. Okay. So in, in this position um, right now, what would, for you, determine which way you went in terms of um, would it be his knee positions, so his hip direction, for whether you would back step to this leg or whether you would step over? Yeah, so Lloyd, yeah, it entirely depends on how they react. So if Lloyd tries to turn to his left, they switch to a knee slice. Uh, and in order to do that, he'd have to use his right foot on the floor to turn into me, to turn to his left. Yeah. So if I step into HQ and Lloyd wants to turn to his left, he'll have to plant his foot to turn in. That leg is now being used, so the benefit of stepping into HQ and, and going to knee slices off of it is quite often you bypass his right knee shield because his right leg will be facing to try and align his hips to the other side, so you'll go straight past it, the, the knee shield. Whereas if that foot, that raised left foot, stepped directly into a knee slice to my right side, um, Lloyd would be getting his knee shield in all the time. Okay. Yes. Makes sense. To me. But Lloyd did a good, Lloyd had a really strong frame, so it took me, I mean, I didn't break down his frames, uh, to pass his guard, so. 
but I'll try and so I step in, Lloyd's foot was uh, out of position, so I sat back for a leg lock. I've now got reverse X on the back leg, so I'm trying to elevate, kicking my right leg through to collect his back leg. Mm -hmm. Lloyd sees this, I think, and back steps out of um, of the X, so I'm unable to chase, but it gives up a sweep again. Okay, so yeah, you've got... Um, let me see if I can get the... But I was hardly worried about sweeps falling back for leg locks as well, so <laughs> you can't. So you've got one leg there, you've obviously got, uh, sorry, the other way, that leg coming through there for the reverse. Yeah. And um, so if you if you elevated and got that, this would actually be the foot that you'd have control. Yeah, so that'd be, that, that'd be the primary leg that I'm trying to get hold of, yeah. Okay. Oh, there. So, yeah, there's the step out. Was with this foot here, were you looking to have it in his butt or was you looking to staple over the, the hamstring? I, so when he, uh, at this point, I'm thinking maybe I can suck that leg in for a knee bar. So when he stepped out and stops here, so if we stop, what I like doing off of this, I can still use that reverse X on that back leg there even when we're on the ground. So I can uh, kick that right leg um, past his knee, potentially collect his right leg as well. Mm -hmm. um, Lloyd is wise to this, strips it, I think, and tries spinning out the control I have on his uh, on his other leg. Oh, yeah. So I tried to invert a straight foot lock because I lost that um, the attacks I was going for on the with the reverse X. So we're out, back in, shin staple, leg again. I don't like how much I fell back to that, that leg in this match. So we persisted with the passing a little bit. I think, for me at least, um, one of the um, skills that I really had to work on when going for legs is... Um, is this rolling backwards to stay attached? It's that I, people were um, escaping by running out, and I had to really work on rolling backwards with them. Yeah, I tend to give up on uh, on the leg there and try to come in some heavy passing off of it. Mm -hmm. so, uh... so yeah, trying to change direction, switching from pressure. So Lloyd's pushing me in the head. So again, on the engagement, my head is always uh, very low here. It also, um, so if Lloyd wanted to, he could potentially come up on singles. Uh, for him to do that, he'd have to get underneath my head. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the head position also protects against that. So you, you've still got the the HQ and your so you still, I suppose not down, I suppose it's more into the... Into his butt, yeah. So if I can keep that heel tight to his butt, he will not be able to win for, uh, uh, for K-guard entries to his right. And it will, you pushing down on the lever here will lift his knee more in this um, direction to give you the, the hip there. Yeah. And it's just to staple the leg. Yeah, so um, it stops him from turning back into me, this one. Okay. Yeah, so that he can't um, shoot out and have his... Yeah. So he can't, he can't plant his right toes on the ground now, turn his hips to his left. Okay. So I try settling in on the pressure again. I move my hips forwards. So you see how he kicks hard out of that? Mm -hmm. And when he does that, I have to commit my weight forward because there's, that, uh, there's nothing stopping him from inverting there onto that left leg. 
so when he kicks hard. Ah, okay. So you see how I'm part. Of it, so that's what kills the inversion. Very interesting. Okay, so yeah. And he, I think he does that a few times in the match, and I have to drop in hard to get my weight forward. So he kicks, clears that grip because that's what stopped me from inverting. Tries to clear that leg and just drop it. Out. Okay. So looking to get your head. Or st- keep your head in between his his legs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's got to pressurize um, guys with good leg locks. He's got to keep coming forward. The worst thing you can do is back away and let him tee off on you. You've got to be aggressive with your passing. So me trying that back step entry again. Again, holding his um, his heel down, stop the inversion, always winning that inside leg. Yeah. So you... when he sat up on me there and I had both knees on the floor, immediately left leg comes back in again. So right. So here, this is not good. So I shift weight onto my right side to give me um, uh, a light left leg so I can pummel it easily. As he's sitting up, weight in. And specifically inside the knee? Yeah, that's where I live. So similar half guard exchange to earlier, head low, arm low, uh, leg lace, trying to force those legs open. So I raise my knees, start switching to, to a knee slice again, trying to force the legs open, but my very strong. So here, I had to fall back a bit because Lloyd actually got me out of position there. So, so my, my, my oh. feet were in a bad position. Okay. And Lloyd almost ended up underneath me. So this kick away, see how close he is to my legs now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's under, under my head. My arm is almost going over the top of it. Your uh, left arm? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Lloyd's got good head position here. And was he um, looking to push your head further away to make your left foot heavier? To I think that's probably uh, left over from um, from the half guard there. But imagine he'd want to be leaving that forward, looking to get underneath me now, mainly. Okay, yeah. So with Lloyd's right arm, He's looking to again put the the pit of his elbow into your ankle, heel, or sort of Achilles to to yeah. set back in your left leg. Yeah, so I think he might be looking to clear his um his right leg out to the uh to my right side to start looking at some leg locks. Okay. Yeah. But I think I am yeah, so I had to drop back and get that left leg inside again. Okay. So that, sorry, that's really interesting. The re- or at least it is to me. So um, here, where he's got, he's going to eventually, um, he's going to eventually be wanting this leg. Yeah, my my. Um, well, he could go for both. Really, there's inversions uh, attacks on both both legs. Yeah. My left leg is way too far forward. So it should, it should be more... Yeah. So yeah. It, yeah, so if I pulled that left leg back, it would make my right knee heavier, mm-hmm. which would make his inversions not yeah. possible. Yeah, it, he'd have to sort of invert almost twice yeah. to get into this space. Yeah, but, so me being concerned of that, I throw my left leg inside his leg to, yeah. to stop this inversion. Okay, yeah, because there, uh, and you went over the foot, you went over the leg, didn't you? Yeah, always, yeah. So now I've got double inside. I got both my legs inside his. Really interesting. So that w- was that. Would you say a defensive movement rather than an attacking? Um, I think I threw. So there's an entry there for leg locks on his top mm-hmm. leg. Looking back on it, I don't think I was ever going to get uh, an outside heel hook on Lloyd right there. But it certainly came from um, a bad position for me to be in, I think. Okay.
He's got really strong frames, hasn't he, Lloyd? Yeah, it was really hard for me, like, getting underhooks on him or staying close to him. Like, every time he was kicking me away and still generating space. So there again. But you got to be persistent with it and just continue to lean. Uh, so I managed to get outside his legs there, but lightly placed easy. I'm trying to fish for underhooks on the near side. Uh, big preference to underhook in near side and half guard over cross facing. Okay, so um, your left hand, rather than even with your right leg through, you'd yeah. the left underhook. Yeah. Okay. For what reason? I want control over his hips, not his head. So I find it way easier to flatten having um, uh, an underhook on the near side as opposed to a cross face. Because the cross face inevitably makes me commit weight too far forward. Too or... far forward, yeah. I still use it, I mean, if it's there. Um, but what I really want when I have uh, when I go for a cross face is I want to be shin stable in his lower leg. Okay. So you've got the um, C grip again on the wrist. Yes. Control the lever. Um, are you still you're still punching through, and, and you have inside control with both, or not with both because this one's through, but yeah. with the, the left leg. So again, from here, would you? What style of passing would you go like to finish? I'm probably looking to move around to his left here. Maybe try and punch that lower leg through and hold his hand down to the ground. Maybe with my uh, head coming up under the chin. But, okay. Yeah, so I'm yeah, not too sure. onto this side. Right. So that's him going for the K guard entry again. Yeah, there's me looking like this is the best no gi match I've ever seen. No, it's fine. <laughs> this, this, I'm uh, I'm super harsh. I should have um, should have done a lot better. Um, I, I don't know. You're both like levels above me in the no gi, um, and probably gi as well. To be fair, um. <laughs> But this was the match that I've said to both of you since. But um, this is the match that took me away from all of the gi training. I was watching this just thinking the amount of control that you were able to uh, both generate. You were both so close, but with control. So before this, I'd sort of fallen into the category of... Yeah, no, it does look hugely different to a lot of... No gear at lower levels. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and that's where I live. <laughs> no, I, I definitely not. Yeah. So, so I'm just yeah, still trying to continue to pressurize forward. I fall back to this leg. Shouldn't have thinking I potentially shoot for a knee bar. Light's got an underhook on my leg, hook uh, cup in my hip. So there is no way I'm getting this. My uh, hips are all out of uh, out of line, but. I'm on my back now, so maybe I can get some results from um, from my back. So Lloyd's hugging from the angle. I think that's his arm. Yeah. So left arm is going underneath um, my top leg and cupping my hip. So that's Your that's his standard. Hip. Yeah. Okay. So I have to kick Lloyd away there because he could potentially have uh, pressurized me heavy. Um, so I'm cupping this shin here, looking for maybe some leg attacks. But Lloyd throws in a cross fist and I get on the arm and transition to my, the arm bar finish here. Let's just put that again. So, so, yeah, I love this grip here, the right hand under the shin. So. Or what I we, can 
So my left hand, uh, my top, my left hand will then come in to grab his knee, and Ray screws up his face. So I can then work my left butterfly foot to potentially attack his right leg with uh, reverse X entries. So I could take my right grapevine out, elevate him to the left side, so that will bring his right leg up off the floor, which will then allow me to attack reverse X entries on that side of his body. Uh, Craig Jones does it a lot. Okay. So Lloyd does not like me being underneath this leg. So his reaction now is to throw an underhook in on my right side. But because I am essentially at a 90 degree angle on all my side, the underhook is only effective if my hips are, are, are flat, if there's weight on my hips. So as Lloyd throws this in, I, act, I threaten um, an arm wrap, I think, briefly, to try and isolate that arm. So I like going from throw my partners off the back. So I'm going to try and remember all of this. So so you have the underhook of the shin. Yeah, so if he's if he's high up like this, and cup, I can then left hand will look to cup the knee. So now this leg can't move. Cup the knee on the outside. Yeah, yeah. So I'll look to cup there. Would you be pulling his foot in as well? I'll be pulling it to me, yeah. So he can't, um, uh, can't base on it. I will then look to elevate with my left butterfly foot, uh, the direction my head is. Yeah. Picking his right leg up off the floor. When that happens, my right grapevine will come out. Mm. And my right leg, my bottom leg, will then shoot past his to collect it for a saddle entry, uh, for a 411. Okay. Yeah. Get it. So, yeah. Um, it's the entry I hit in the ADCC Trials Finals. Right. I'm going to go and check that out. Yeah. So, uh, so that's what I'm threatening here, but so what Lloyd does to counter this is to look to throw an underhook in with his right arm. Right. And cross face me. So yeah, I was able to keep that grip from from a standing position. What's the hook goes in? And he grabs my head. Now he moves up to an underhook and he's grabbing my head. So he's actually in a lot of danger here. Um so remember what I mentioned earlier about taking a very shallow um grapevine? Mm -hmm. So there is no space for him to get in on my right hip because my right knee is really close to my chest and my head is close to the knee. Okay. So that means his underhook cannot work. What also is making it difficult for him to move to his right side to commit weight on me to pass and shut down my hips is that left butterfly hook. Mm -hmm. And specifically, um, the knee being over. Yeah. Obviously, so yeah. My foot is inside and my shin is barring. So my shin is running up the inside of his right hip. Okay, so it's it's in. Yeah. So that's like, a, I feel like, like a collar almost, like so a, a vertical yeah, bar in on that. So you're shielding, really? Yeah, yeah. So that, that, that butterfly hook there. Is, uh, is working like uh, yeah. So I've just got my shin uh, jammed in on his hip. So this is making it very difficult for him to flatten me out and get weight over my hips. Okay. So I extract my left arm after this, I think, and arm wrap his his arm. Now because my butterfly hook is in, I can use that butterfly hook to extend him and potentially threaten that arm isolation. Is your right knee going to come underneath almost like a John Wayne sweep? No, no, I'm just going to leave that kind of tight to my chest. Okay. So here, pause, arm wrap comes in. He commits weight forward instead, but because that leg is so shallow, I'm able to switch immediately from um, my half guard to a, a butterfly. One thing you don't want to be doing is holding on to somebody's head in butterfly guard. Yeah. So half guard's fine, butterfly absolutely not. So I've got two hooks extending his hips back away from his arm.
and he tried so he tried to throw that left knee in to my hip. The reason why I was able to block that was because of my shallow grapevine and my right arm being very low to that knee. So I was able now, so you can just see, so my knee is outside. There's your knee. Yeah. Um, uh, this armbar does not work if Lloyd keeps his head above the line of his hand. So, like, they look nasty, but if they're, um, if Lloyd's like, head is just straight up above his arms, not work. So I've got to use both of my butterfly hooks now to kick him off to the side. So to the to to the right side. So now his head drops down. Now it's on. And there, it, just the violin armbar. Yeah. So now he's able to scramble out, and I transition to a regular armbar. Yeah, that's such a nice armbar. The beauty of that armbar is the the leg position allows, rather than having to move your hips to them, you can curl them into you, can't they? Yeah. I love yeah, and it, it, it nails that shoulder to the floor. This armbar is crazy tight. Yeah. So um, with where's my mouse gone again? Ah, there it is. So with um, with, over. with your feet there. Yeah, you can keep his shoulder and either pull them into you. Yeah, or... and it, he can't sit up here because of the weight uh, of that left shin going through his shoulder. That one there. It's not yeah. So normally when I uh, when I do this, I actually look towards the feet a little bit, raising my right hip and turning to my left side. Okay. To get as much weight through that shoulder as possible. And it also makes it... Um, harder for Lloyd to do the, the counter to this position, which is to push my knee mm -hmm. past his head. So my left knee, he'd be looking with his right arm to push it up past his head, and then when he sits up, In he can that. come around the pass. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, not down, but I can't obviously draw a line towards me. Um, yeah. That would allow him, yeah, if he got his head onto the outside of that of knee. Your left you, knee. You'll, you'll His probably shoulder, pass my yeah. guard and potentially look for a back kick. Yeah. It'll force me to. So there are risks to using this armbar, but if you, if you know what the escape, then you can just change your body angle to, to make that knee low. It was very high on that finish, but. Yeah. Keep the moment. Yeah, it's such a great, a great match. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I was pleased with the finish. <laughs> yeah, I think when um, when you've got two guys that are so good at the um, at a particular part. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying that you're not both well rounded, but you definitely both know for leg locks. I think there's always the the thought that. You know, it's going to go somewhere else. There'll be an armbar or a back attack or something like that. Um, especially back attacks because of the, the ability to defend the leg lock and go to the back. You two are obviously going to know really well. Yeah, no, it was uh, hard work. Sure. Definitely, I, I got super frustrated trying to pass. And you saw that with um, some. Yeah kind of panic leg lock entries trying to make something happen. Um, I was pleased with uh, stuffing the K-Guard entry. I knew that was a legit risk going into that match. So looking back on it, I'm quite pleased that how I dealt with that. Yeah. Um, it was, as I say, incredible. The, the technique uh, shown by both of you, to me, was fairly mind-blowing. Um, I guess, like, if you, uh, you, you ask both of us, I mean, you ask any competitor, all we want to do is totally run through the other guy. <laughs> like, regardless, regardless, and you ask Lloyd as well, like, you, you ask anyone. If we're not smashing people and just winning constantly, we're, we're disappointed. 
Do you think that's um, the standard that you place upon yourself? Yeah, definitely. I don't just want to. I, I I don't just want to um, sneak by wins. I want to be like dominating people. So so I've had some good results against. Well, I guess good results. I don't see them. At, so like fighting Wagner, for instance, or uh, JT. So I'm able to get through fifteen minutes with them, and and you know it looks competitive. And I feel competitive, but. I want to be, you know, just, just smashing them. So it's not, and this is, is quite, it's quite a, obviously it's a really difficult thing to do with schools on show. I have a lot, or any of my trophies. No. I hate kind of like sitting. It's like, it, it's almost like it, it just doesn't say it's nothing and keep you grounded and just always try and get more. Where the, where's the finish point to that guy? Death. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it a lack of satisfaction or um, oh, yeah. motivation to do more? Um, the longest I've been satisfied for is a week, I think, and that was after, like, after those ADCC trials. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, like, I can take a week where I don't need to, like, be pushing for the next thing. And then after that, I'm like, it's an addiction. It's not, it's not healthy. It's not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's got you to this but, level. But, yeah, but that's why, like, I'm very conscious. I don't like like if I win something, I'm like, uh, I want it, you know, pleased with that next one. Okay. I'm very kind of like, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not like, oh, I've trained really hard for this. It's a combination of uh, everything I've ever fought for. Yeah, That's... I haven't, I, I haven't got there, got there yet, right? Yeah, is there a is there a place where you think that will happen? I don't know. I mean, it's the same. In, it's it's the same. I I I'm the same in every every other part of my life. Okay, so is it a, an orientation towards goals or is it? I don't know. Like. I think addiction goals, um, just one. I'm addicted. I'm addicted to achieving stuff. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The achievement. Uh, but but that only lasts because the moment you achieve something, it's no longer an achievement, is it? It's like you've got it now. Do you feel a sense of relief when you've achieved it, or do you feel um... relief? And you know, you get you get all of it. Definitely relief. Um, it, it depends on the thing that you're going for. So there's certainly an added pressure if you're expected to go into a tournament and win, which yeah. I think was probably the case in uh, with this one, you know, a different way. Uh, you know, it's, you've got the con the kind of Conor McGregor way of dealing with things in there. It's like toxic confidence kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely not like that. I've got imposter syndrome. Yeah, I've heard I, you I'm, this before. I'm waiting to be found out constantly. That's going away a little bit. Like, I feel like I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing, but just because of the amount of people that I know that are like, oh, I'm incredible, yeah, on this, oh, on that. And then there's you. I mean, I saw on, I think it was, was it BJJ Heroes or BJJ? Eastern Europe, something like that, but you were like number five in the you were the only European leg locker in this list of top leg lockers and I, I was reading it thinking I bet A, he's probably not even seen this and if he did, he'd probably go, well yeah that's alright <laughs> put his phone down Yeah it's Incredible, I know people that would Try to sell seminars off that. 
nah. <laughs> But I think we both know people that would be like, well, look, this website has said this. You should get me to your gym. Yeah. Just to me. To me, at least. 